and go to the book of Leviticus. Child of 
Leviticus chapter 15. In the book of Leviticus chapter 15, we will start reading from uh, verse 19. If you have it at the back, can you just please quickly read it for us? Leviticus chapter 19. read from verse 19 until verse uh, verse 28 Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19 up until verse 28 I'm a child of God And did it from the back. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your domestic animals breed with a different kind. Um, so Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19 up until 28, 15, verse 19. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19 to 28. And if a woman has a discharge, her discharge of blood of her body, she shall be in her impurity or separation for seven days. And whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening and everything that she lies on in her separation shall be unclean everything also that she sits on shall be unclean and whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening and and if, okay right down and if her flow has stained her bed Hallelujah. I think my amen is missing in the house. Hallelujah. I'm not going to start teaching until I get a bigger amen. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Uh, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. I think Toowoomba can do better than you. Hallelujah. Maybe Zimbabwe can do better. Hallelujah. I wish I was in South Africa. I would get a better amen. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Now the Bible in the book of Leviticus 
God is giving a command to Aaron and Moses to pass over to the children of Israel. And as he gives this part of the commandment, he is talking about uncleanliness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as you read from verse 1 of chapter 15 of Leviticus, you realize that it was not only talking about the uncleanness of the men, of the women, but also it starts with the men from verse 1. And from verse 19, it now talks about the uncleanness of a woman. Hallelujah. And then verse 19, the Lord says, if a woman has a discharge and the discharge from her body is blood. Must understand that God is being specific in terms of what type of discharge he's talking about. So he says, in this instance, if a woman, any woman amongst you has a discharge, but this discharge is a discharge of blood, she shall be set apart for seven days and whoever touches her is unclean and everything that she lies on becomes also unclean it further goes to say not only does what she touch becomes unclean but whoever touches what she has touched also becomes unclean hallelujah so it means anything that she has come into contact with already that thing also becomes unclean if she sits on a chair that chair becomes unclean so it means if we're in a church environment like this and she sits on a chair that chair becomes unclean and if she moves from that chair she goes home after church whoever will come to church next week sunday and sits on the same chair that she sat on last week that person who's sitting on the same chair that person becomes also unclean so it means this flow of blood was not only making a hair unclean it was making her and whatever she comes into contact with also unclean and everyone who comes into contact what she has come into contact with also becomes a partaker of the uncleanliness. Now, you must understand that now God is telling them when you go further, He says this woman is to be set apart, meaning she is not supposed to be amongst the people. So if we were in church like this, if she was unclean, she was not supposed even to come to church. Even if she comes, she was not supposed to touch anyone. If you read in the Old Testament and you study about the men who had leprosy, the Bible says this men who had leprosy would be cast out of the gates of the city because leprosy was contagious and it was considered unclean if anyone had leprosy hallelujah so just as in this case that we are studying the lord says if a woman has a discharge of blood it also talks about a monthly cycle if you read further you'll find where it's talking about if this woman is in a monthly cycle and she has a discharge of blood she is also unclean but for a specific time Hallelujah. But when you read further from chapter 19, he further goes on to say, if the same woman has a discharge, but that is continuous, meaning that is not stopping, this woman becomes unclean. Hallelujah. I, I don't know what has happened to my amen, but I think maybe it's lost somewhere under the chairs. Uh, maybe hallelujah now the Bible says if this woman has 
this church she be, she is unclean so she has to be set apart like the people who had leprosy and after if she was to be considered clean she had to appear before the priest hallelujah so now you read now in the book of leviticus about uh, uh, this uncleanliness and i began to ask myself what is it about the blood that makes a woman clean or unclean hallelujah so i needed to find out what is it about the blood that makes this woman clean or unclean and as you begin to study you realize that the book from the book of genesis the bible from the book of genesis up until the book of revelations which is the last book of the bible this bible that we read is full of the blood hallelujah there is no there is no book where you do not find the blood so what is it about the blood that is making this woman clean or unclean can you ask your neighbor what is it about this uh, ask them again just shake them if you are sitting next to an empty chair you are sitting next to an angel you are blessed today hallelujah uh, can i get a bigger amen now the bible says now if if this woman has a discharge she must be set apart because she's unclean she's unclean for a specific time but if it is continuous for that term that it is continuing this discharge of blood she begins to be unclean hallelujah she begins to be unclean why because uh, of the discharge so the discharge it is what is making her unclean and not only the discharge but a specific discharge which is a discharge of blood hallelujah hallelujah now i want you to understand something the bible then goes further when i wanted to find out what is it about the blood that makes this woman clean or unclean i began to study further in the book of Leviticus chapter 17 hallelujah and 17 verse 11 says the life of any flesh it is in the blood hallelujah let's say the life of any flesh it is in the blood so what was making her unclean it is because now there is life that is flowing out hallelujah now when you read further hallelujah when you read further in the book of luke chapter 8 verse 43 you study about the woman with the issue of blood hallelujah and the bible says as jesus was passing by when jesus was passing by he was going the Bible says there was a girl who was about to die or who was sick. And the Bible is specific in terms of the age. It, it says this little girl was 12 years old. Hallelujah. And as Jesus was going to heal this girl who's 12 years old, the Bible now says there was a woman with the issue of blood. And it's very interesting because now the Bible tells us how long this woman had been suffering from. How long has she suffered from this discharge of blood? The Bible says this woman had been suffering from this issue of blood for 12 years. Hallelujah. And I don't find it as a coincidence that Jesus he is going to heal a little girl who is 12 years old. And now there is a woman with the issue of blood who's been suffering from this issue for 12 years. I wish maybe if I was in America, T.D. Jakes can give me a better amen. Don't worry, even if you don't give me, I'll still preach. Hallelujah. And the Bible says this woman 
with the issue of blood she heard that Jesus was passing by Jesus was not going to heal her Jesus was going to heal a little girl who is 12 years old but when this woman heard that there is the Savior who is passing by to heal someone there he cannot pass me by he cannot pass me by listen to this now the Bible says remember what we have read in the book of Leviticus it says if this woman has a discharge of blood she is supposed to be set apart because she is unclean so anything she touches becomes unclean so she is not supposed to touch anyone she is not supposed to be in a place where there are people but here is this woman with the issue of blood who hears that Jesus is passing by and the Bible tells us to say this woman had suffered for 12 years can you imagine 12 years 12 years of suffering from the issue of blood means she did not have a husband let's say maybe she had a husband if she had a husband it means they were not even staying in the same bed. They were not sleeping in the same bed. Because the Bible says if a man sleeps on the same bed that she's sleeping on, he becomes unclean. If a man touches anything that she has touched, that man becomes unclean. So it means this woman was not even supposed to cook for the husband. Because the food was going to be unclean. If, if the woman was supposed to wash, for the husband it means he was not supposed to wear those clothes because the clothes are unclean so uh, from the facts i'm just thinking maybe she did not have a husband at all because le okay le let's for okay for critics sakes let's say maybe this issue started when she was married let's say it started when she was married let's say before she did not have but it started when she was married I doubt there is a man who can stay 12 years without touching a woman. Even if you don't give me a bigger amen, I don't know, I will preach. Uh, let's say the issue started when she was married. Chances are even the husband had to divorce her because he's saying, I cannot starve when I'm not, someone is not cooking for me. I'm married but I can't sleep in the same bed with my wife so if the issue started when she was married it means maybe she had a divorce so it means 12 years of being unclean meant that it's 12 years of separation 12 years of struggle she cannot have a child because she's unclean now the Bible says this woman had suffered for 12 years and she had gone to a lot of doctors and physicians for help and the Bible specifically tells us that she had spent all of her money looking for help how many of us have spent many things looking for help now the Bible says this woman when she heard that Jesus was passing by the Bible says she came from behind hallelujah she came from behind why is she coming from behind because she knows that the people in the city they know her they know that this woman is unclean this woman is not supposed to be amongst us so if she's coming from the front they are going to chase her away so what she does she is coming from behind Shakadaba. i've come to tell someone maybe you have been rejected but the lord says you are coming from behind where everyone has gone ahead of you you are coming from behind when they have started their businesses i'm coming from behind when they have started their churches, I'm not in a rush. I'm coming from behind. When they're staying in their big houses, I'm not in a rush. I'm 
coming from behind when they drive their nice cars I don't worry I am coming from behind when they have their children and they have two three children I don't worry I'm coming from behind when they are getting married and I'm not getting married no one is proposing me but I am coming from behind woman is coming from behind and as she's coming from behind she knows I'm not supposed to be here but I'm gonna push through I'm gonna push through the Bible says there were many crowns you see when you come from behind because there are people in front of you you must be able to push through you must be able to push through when you start a business where others have started the businesses you must be able to push through when you start the church where others have started churches, you must be able to push through. Shakadaba, Rada Bayakadaba, Lia Rabro Sakayadaba. You are about to push through. You are about to push through. God is about to give you an anointing where you shall push through. I am behind, but I'm coming. I am behind, but I'm coming. I am behind, but I am coming. talks about Ruth and Naomi. The Bible says this. Ruth, she went to the field of Boaz and she said, even if others are working, please, just let me come from behind. Please, just let me come from behind. The Bible says as they were working in the field, she came behind, taking the leftovers, taking the leftovers. I'm sure they were laughing at her. Look what she's taking. She's taking the leftovers. But she says, I don't worry. I'm coming from behind. I am coming from behind. I am coming from behind. I will take the leftovers. woman this woman she touched the hem of his garment and the flow of blood stopped after pushing through you must know where to touch You must know where to touch. Let me explain for you why you need to know where to touch. You see this prayer mantle. Now in the Old Testament, because Jesus was a rabbi and a teacher, in the Old Testament, the teachers or the rabbis, they would wear specific garments. If you have read the story about Joseph where the father made him a coat of many colors it was a coat like that then God specifically told them to say in this coat you must make what we call a titit hallelujah now a titit was supposed to be a little rope towards the end of the garment this little rope was supposed to be blue in color. You can go and Google it, you'll see. This little thing is exactly from the Bible. So after the teachers were wearing that garment with many colors, as centuries passed on, they said, now the teachers will not wear those coats. They will make a prayer mantle like this one. So that's why every prayer mantle from Israel is made exactly like this. Because it's in the book of, it's in the Bible. 
So now, the coat of many colors was not just colors, but they were symbolizing something. So another color will be for healing. Another color will be for miracles. Another color will be for restoration. Another color will be for holiness. But the hem, the seated the, the hem of his garment, exactly like this one blue thing here, it represented the word of God. So it means this woman said, as I'm pushing through, I am not going to touch healing. I am not going to touch holiness because I am not holy. But I need to touch the word of God because in the word of God I will find my healing. In the word of God I will find my restoration. In the word of God I will find my miracle. So now this woman touches the hem of his garment and the blood stops flowing Jesus turned around and says who touched me who touched me and Peter says but there are many people Jesus says no but there is someone with a touch of faith can I talk about a touch of faith for a little bit I say a touch of faith Shakara, but I wish I was in America. A touch of faith, even if it is not my time for healing, when I have a touch of faith, I will get my healing. Even if it's not time for my miracle, a touch of faith, I will take my miracle. I will take my job. I will take my business. I will take it by force. have faith for her. He did not even pray for her. She just said, I'm going to touch him. Listen to this. Now, Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. I wish someone was here. I said your faith has made you whole sometimes it is not your pastor's faith that will heal you but your own faith will make you whole what do you believe in your own faith will make you to be successful if you believe you're a millionaire your own faith makes you a millionaire if you believe you're a billionaire your own faith will make you a billionaire if you believe you are the greatest in the world, your own faith makes you the greatest. Now Jesus says, I did not use my faith. She used her faith. Did you know what this woman did? The woman hijacked her miracle. Somebody say, hijack a miracle. Shout loud and say, hijack a miracle. Hijack a miracle. Listen, in life you must be able to hijack a miracle. This miracle was not going for her, but it was just passing by. And Jesus said, The woman said, I'm gonna hijack the healing that's going to the little girl. It's gonna start from me. I prophesy over your life. May you hijack your miracle in the name of Jesus. May you hijack your blessing in the name of Jesus. May you hijack one shakana. It was very interesting because the, the Lord took me back to the book of Leviticus chapter 17 where he says the life of anything is in there. The life of anything is in there. So it means when the woman was bleeding, remember people in the medical field or the doctors, they will tell you, I never did biology human science, I did uh, uh, I, I did the financial sector things, hallelujah so I did my business economics, accounting uh, mercantile law and all of those things until I got my uh, de 
green marketing. Hallelujah. Well, I, I want to know in terms of how the blood comes, how the heart works. Hallelujah. So, but one thing that I do know, it's simple things like the blood, its function, it is to pump blood. Am I correct? People who did biology, can I see your hands? Ah, there's no one who did biology in the house. Oh, in the foyer, you are powerful. You are a prophetess. The, the little things I know about the blood, it's the heart, its function, it is to pump blood. Hallelujah. That's why God says, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Now listen to this. Leviticus 17, 11 says, the life of anything is in the blood. And people in the medical field will tell you the blood is supposed to circulate in the body. Now I was watching a movie with my prophet yesterday. When the movie started, there was this couple who were in a car. The car had an accident and it rolled. Now the man was able to come out of the car the wife was stuck and she was bleeding in the car. So she was bleeding too much until when the paramedics arrived, they found that she has bled to death. So they told the husband her bleeding was too much, it led to death. Hallelujah. So people in the medical field will tell you blood is supposed to circulate in the body. Hallelujah. So what was happening is blood was coming out instead of circulating. Hallelujah. So that's why you find that when the blood is coming out, life is coming out. As that woman was bleeding, life was coming out. As that woman was bleeding, life was coming out. As she was bleeding, life was coming out. And God began to minister to me to say, this is the condition in my church. The church is bleeding. He said the church is bleeding. And I began to ask, Lord, what do you mean when you say the church is bleeding? The Lord said, the devil knows the scriptures. And he knows that the life of anything is in the blood. So the devil knows that if he wants to kill the church, he must make sure that the blood is coming out of the church. That's why in our churches today, there's no preaching about the blood. We preach about prosperity. We preach about you'll get your car. You'll get your breakthrough. But where is the blood? Where is the blood? Where is the message of the cross? There is no blood in the church because the devil is taking the blood out of the church. does not mind you preaching about prosperity but he says don't preach about the blood forget the blood yes you can prophesy but don't touch the blood heal the sick but don't touch the blood do miracles but don't touch the blood the lord says where is the blood where is the blood the miracles but show me the blood I see the deep prophecies you are prophesying you can call numbers and ID numbers and, but where is the blood yes you can raise people from wheelchairs but where is the blood the church is bleeding like the woman with the issue of blood the church is slowly bleeding bleeding bleeding. People forget about the blood. The pastors forget about the blood. The prophets forget about the blood. The apostles they forget about the blood. The evangelists they forget about the blood. And the Lord is saying where is the blood? Where is the blood? Now listen to this. Now the Bible says 
vocês as the blood is flowing out as the blood is flowing out the blood is flowing the blood is flowing what was supposed to circulate in your life is flowing out have you ever realized that even if you are married maybe the love that was supposed to be between you and your husband flows out to a small house outside because the blood is flowing have you ever realized that you'll have money but you don't know where the money has gone blood it's flowing out it's not circulating it's flowing it's flowing out Gift, give me 15 minutes I'm about to close right now I just want to quickly read it. I want you to see the power of the blood because from the New Testament any covenant that was made was made by the blood. Hallelujah. So the old covenant old covenant meant the covenant of the blood. The new covenant means the covenant of the blood. Hallelujah. Now if you read in the book of Hebrews This is chapter 12 verse 22. Ja karaba sayada. It says but you have come to Mount Zion the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to God the judge of all to the spirits of just men made perfect to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood sprinkling better and the blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel hallelujah hallelujah Where is Zion today? The Bible says you have come to Mount Zion. I thought you were going to give me a better amen. He says you have come to Mount Zion. I, I wish I could get a better amen. He says you have come to Mount Zion. This is the city of the living God. It's not just a city, but it is where a number of angels are. I said there are angels in this house. There are angels of healings in the house. There are angels of miracles in the house. There are angels of your healing in the house. Shakaraba. Listen, it is not only also about the angels. He says there is also the blood. Shaka. Ah, ah. I says there is a blood. He says now there is a blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Shakaraba. Maybe I was in America. Now can I get a better amen? I say the Bible says there is blood that speaks better things. There, she, there, there is blood that speaks better things. There is blood. Shaka. Remember in the Old Testament, the blood of Abel was crying from the ground. But it was not speaking better things. It was accusing Cain to say, may I be revenged. But in the New Testament, the blood speaks better things. Shakadaba, I say you are no longer condemned. In the New Testament, the blood speaks better things. Shakadaba, I say the blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. It's speaking. 
speaking better things. If you are sick, the blood is speaking healing. Shaka. If you are poor, the blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. You cannot be poor anymore. The blood is speaking. You cannot be sick anymore. The blood is speaking. Your deliverance is today. The blood is speaking. He's speaking better than You are going to your promised land. You are going to your 
promised land Egypt I'm coming out I'm going home I'm going home Shapadaba I'm coming out because of the blood. I am healed because of the blood. I'm justified because of the blood. I am made righteous because of the blood. I am coming out. I am coming out. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood.
without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Because the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, it makes us whole, it makes us righteous, it means we are in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are blessed today? How many are going to apply the blood today? Hallelujah. We're not going to pray for people because we are above time. Time is not on our side. Hallelujah. And we just want to thank God for, for his presence. We just want to thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for there is none like you. We thank you for you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, Lord, for your word. For we know that your word will never come and return to you for. We know that today this word has accomplished whatever it was assigned to accomplish. May this word change families. May this word change finances. May this word change marriages. May this word change business. May this word change ministries. Take us back to the blood. Take us back to the cross. Because that is where the power is. For they overcame him by the blood. So we overcome by the blood. Father, we know that from today, we are overcomers because of the blood. We are overcomers. Whatever we shall come across this week, we know we are overcomers because of the blood. Whatever is coming this month, whatever challenge is coming, we shall overcome because of the blood. This year, whatever challenge will come, we shall overcome because of the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Get your offering ready. Oh, oh, the blood. Get your offering ready, please. Of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Oh, oh. Just bring your offering laid at the altar. Bring your offering laid at the altar. Blood, 
I need money, blood. I want to be. Let's close. You're not getting it. You are still in the physical. Ah, I just got it. So I can speak to my blood. I can tell my blood, blood, come out and speak for me. Whoever wants to kill my children, blood, work for me. Whoever who wants to terminate my life, whoever say I will not make it in this life because of your blood in my life, I will. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. Let's go home. I feel like preaching all over again, but let's go home. Next week, we're going to talk about the difference between the blood and the cross. So the blood and the cross. We'll talk about that next week. I'm so charged now. It's like we are about to start service. But because God, we are living overseas where we are all looking at our time to go home. I pray that God will go to us safely and sound. Some of you want to go and eat your cassava leaf and potato greens, I know. But I feel service is starting now. Lift up your hand. Let me pray with you. I'm not going to preach. Don't, your heart shouldn't be beating. You are going home. You're finally going home. So don't worry. I'm not going to open the Bible. But even as you lift your hands, it's because the blood is working through your body. That's why you're going to lift your hand. So that hands that you lift, you can speak to your blood. Your blood. As I lift up my hands, blood, speak for me. And that blood can speak for you. Amen. Father, I pray for your children. Even as they go. As we pour out about your, your goodness this week. About your blood about what you've done for us. God, continue to use us. Even as we go home, may your blood in us speaks. Speaks for us this week. May your blood that is in us give us revelation this week. May the blood that works through us begin to do wonders, miracles, and bring us joy. Thank you, O oh God, and that we meet you on Sunday. We're going to celebrate your blood. And we come here on Sunday, we're going to speak your blood. And we know that your blood will work for us. In the name of Jesus. I pray for your children, even as they go. Those that believe in you for miracle because of the blood, they receive their miracle this week. Because of your blood, they receive revelation this week. Because of your blood, your blood will speak for them, even as they go. I pray for testimony. Let it be. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we thank you in Jesus. Then somebody shout amen three times. And put those hands together for Jesus Christ. You see, I always tell you this before you go home. Let me tell you this. I know we are late beyond time. But listen, if you are excited to come to church with that excitement in your eyes, not thinking about your brother and sister that are not here, you come like that with excitement. God fill your heart with joy. You don't need prophecy. I will say that again. You don't need prophecy to go home happy. <laughs> a man of God preaching this morning, he said something he said most of the Christians these days, all they do now, they have this telescope they use in their eyes, I'm looking for a man of God that can locate me that can locate me, that can tell me what is in my bedroom, what is wrong with my children, you don't need those things you need to come to God's house and listen about preaching that this that will change your life together, because when this person that I'm listening to today has changed my life and I know when I go home today, I'm happy because the blood of Jesus is speaking for me. Good night. Good night. Have a good day. I don't want to be in trouble. Have a good day. May God bless you. May the peace of God be with you. Amen.